I'm Peter Block in Washington, D.C. at ACC 17. On my left is Michael Reardon from Houston, Texas. And Mike has just finished talking about the Sertavi trial. Uh, we now have an exciting trial, another product that we can use for transcatheter aortic valve replacement. Mike, tell me about Sertavi. Tell me about where we stand with this and the, uh, you know, very exciting opportunities that now lie before us. Well, Peter, Sertavi met its primary endpoint. It had some great 30-day safety, and your quality of life improved a lot faster. I think this is going to lead to this valve being rapidly approved by the FDA, which means they'll then have two valves in the intermediate risk population that you and I as implanters can choose from to help our patients. So, you know, intermediate risk, that always pops out. What does that really mean, Mike? I know it was, you know, SDS scores are three, but that really doesn't tell the tale, does it? Well, the real tale is what is your one and two year survival? The more you survive, the, I mean, the healthier you are. And if you look at the survival in this trial, it was better than partner 2A, it was better than the other trials, because it's a lower part of intermediate risk. But again, we now have an STS, the mean STS of 4.4 and 4.5. So we're really moving down closer to what we all consider real low risk. And it gives us some real hope that as we move to low risk, these two trials are running now, partner three and Evolute low risk randomized, could give us some really interesting data. Yeah, I think those trials will push us a little bit further. So let me ask you about the other side of this that we don't talk about much, and that's the surgical side. Well, I mean, as surgeons, uh, you know, you look at this and you go, oh my gosh, this is, I mean, I do these myself. These patients get better. They get better right away. At a week, they're back to normal. Now, a lot of my surgical friends think, okay, if we get this approved in intermediate risk and then finally low risk, all the cases will go away. Not true. There are patients that are still be better for surgery and the right heart team will make good decisions and choose what's best for the patient. What it means is the options will be there. Not everybody will get TAVR. Yeah, no, I agree with that. The surgeons are really getting good at this operation. I mean, but the interesting thing about your trial is that the stroke rate and all the other sort of secondary analyses came out in favor of? TAVR. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, the stroke rate is less, uh, the p patients were in the ICU a short period of time. Less transfusions, less atrial fibrillation, quicker quality of life, uh, better six minute walk test, which you didn't see, but it, it, it's there. So I think we're seeing a lot of advantages to TAVR as we move down. And I think what you and I will do as a cardiologist and a heart surgeon is we're gonna look at a patient's anatomy and match that to their physiology and their desires, and we're gonna make a decision that's best for them. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Um, you are now suddenly transformed into a 40-year-old. That may be difficult to yeah, do, yeah, Mike, yeah. but we'll, we'll nice, figure it it's out. It's a nice thought. <laughs> it's yeah. a nice thought. So, and you need an aortic valve. What do you want? Well, I, I still, for my 40-year-olds now, I still tell them, listen, you're 40 years old, you're still better off with a mechanical valve. The mechanical valves still work well. They're still the best one and done for a 40-year-old. It gets a little more difficult when you get to 50, because when you throw me 50, then I, then I say, okay, I have good, good data between 50 and 60, the survival's the same. But if you're less than 50, you better really convince me you want a tissue valve and you understand why you're getting it. Yeah, I think if you get a big tissue valve when you're 40 or 45 and you can do a TAVR inside of it, that's not so bad. But if yeah. you have a 23 millimeter annulus, I'm not so sure yeah. a TAVR is the right thing for you if you're 44. Yeah. yeah, I think, again, anything 25 or bigger, you're right. They're going to be a great candidate. And maybe they get one TAVR and they come back to you at, at 65 and then we then operate on you and then you're, you're set for life. Anything else you need is going to be TAVR. Okay, well, I think the take home, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Mike, but I think the take home for the folks out there are, we now have options, right? We have men, multiple valves that in fact seem to be equivalent and do very well against surgery. And as we get lower and lower in the STS score, that will only improve our opportunity to make decisions for our patients. That's correct. Thanks, all, Mike. All good for patients. Thanks.